so here we are. This is the third video in our little se sequence of uh, building a race car here at the uh, Ufixit garage in DIP in Dubai. Um, it's been a, a little bit of a challenging week. Uh, obviously, we're, we're a week behind schedule, but um, you know we've had some problems with, with uh, various bits and pieces in the final completion, fuel leaks, oil leaks, all sorts of things. So one of the things we found when we tried to start it for the first time was that the fuel pumps had sort of bound up a little bit. They weren't fully seized, they just needed literally a tap with a hammer. So we had to open the fuel cell, take all the, uh, the padding out of it, um, and then take the pumps out, put them on the bench, quick little tap with a hammer, chuck some voltage up them and away it went. So that was, uh, while it sounds simple, it was still a few hours by the time you take the, the head off the tank and take all the foam out and actually figure out how it all goes together because it's really well put together inside. So we had to do that and at the moment we're running just on one fuel pump to see if that was satisfactory, which it has been so far. We are going to plumb this, uh, the power to the secondary pump and just have it fused so that we could uh, run both pumps or we could even just change between the pumps just to cycle them both. All right, so we're back at the front end of the vehicle, the business end of the vehicle. Uh, now, what we've got in here is something a bit different from factory. Uh, for class rules, or for most motorsport rules, you have to have a front and a rear biasing uh, independent brake system. So what we've done here from a company called Comp Brake in the UK, is we've got a box that has got two pistons instead of the conventional one, and then that has the bias adjustment screw in it, which we have a control for on the dashboard. So then we have two fully independent systems, front and rear. Um, the piston sizes in both of these are different. The, um, the front one is uh, a more aggressive one, uh, so it's a f slightly finer, 0.625, and the rear is a 0.7. So what that means is that we can just control the whole braking of the vehicle. The car is very much front brake biased. Um, and also it means that if for any reason we have a tear in any of the brake line system, uh, we can still stop the car. Now one of the things we've also added inside the vehicle, as you would have seen already, is the hydraulic handbrake. Uh, not necessarily needed for a circuit car, but from our point of view, putting the car on and off trailers, it seemed like a logical idea that, because the car's not usually running then, um, so we wanted to be able to stop the car on a trailer. So we've done that, um, and also with the clutch system in the vehicle as well, we've also plumbed in the, uh, the stainless steel uh, line, we just made it a different colour, so that if I have to say to somebody, check the blue line, we check the blue line. The, the car itself, as it was an RSX, didn't actually have the, the Type R Brembo brakes on it, the car's been converted uh, by a previous owner to have the Type Air uh, front end from Japan. So that gives us the big four pots. It also gives us quite a solid aluminium uh, arm underneath here. Uh, now what we've done to this is take it to the next level and put full PCI joints in. So these have zero movement, there's zero rubber in these, they're all uh, ball joints, front and rear. Uh, and then we've put an extra um, hub in here which gives us an extra a bit of height and this is all about what we talked about in earlier videos about trying to prevent the car from having bumps there. Um, we've dressed it off again with the nice um, full brake line system stainless steel uh, with the transparent purple and that is so the whole car is in that and then these are actually Corvette um, ZR1 Corvette uh, brake ducts which I was going to use on my uh, my Holden and then decided that hey they fit perfectly in here so they're running around to the front end of the vehicle we're getting Cold air blowing straight in the front end, straight onto the rotors. Alright, so here we are inside. Um, still looks a little bit of a shambles because we haven't got the dash in. Um, but with our little custom uh, ignition plate here, we can uh, prime the fuel pumps and stuff starts coming to life. Um, you can hear the fuel pump running continuously. Uh, we get signal on the, uh, on the data system here with the Honda, and then we can start the vehicle up. Give it a bit of revs. starting to come in on the screen uh, and yeah that just confirms that all the sensors are set up and we had to do a few little adjustments throughout the features of the uh, Honda just to uh, get the whole thing ready to run. Okay so we had uh, again, a couple of issues with sensors uh, in particular the wideband sensor um, just trying to get it to, to read with the ECU and I think we have it sorted or I still plan to run an external wideband just to confirm when the vehicle is properly tuned it will probably be tuned to run without a, a wideband sensor so that it will just have set um, fuel ratio commands. In the engine bay we had to uh, adjust the throttle uh, position sensor and then the calibration processes through the Honda. Uh, 
Um, had a couple of other things where the car was running terribly when we first ran it, and then we had an error code come up saying that the crankcase sensor was not connected, which I just hadn't seen. Um, I put that in, and man, the car just came to life. When we first fired the engine up, there was a loud bang, which uh, you know is never a good thing. But what it was was the the oil filter. Um, the thread that went into the uh, the sandwich plate was actually the wrong thread. So while it was hand tight, once it got 80 psi up, it made a little bit of a grenade and it went off. Um, so luckily, we only put a liter of oil on the ground and the oil filter. So we quickly shut the engine down um, and and put it all back together. Unfortunately, we didn't get a photo. I think we're trying to hide the evidence. So we put, anyway, I found a really good shop in. Um, by Times Square in Dubai, a little machining shop recommended to me by Saluki Motorsport. And 100 dirhams later, we had a custom made fitting whipped up in about 25 minutes on the lathe and got it fixed. Okay, so here we are with the, uh, the culprit that caused the oil leak. So basically, looking at it, it does definitely look like this side of the thread is slightly narrower than the, this side. This is an M20. So basically, when we put it in, uh, it was grabbing, but not enough, so that when it, when it was pressurized, held onto the oil filter, didn't hold onto the sandwich plate and blew straight out of the car. <laughs>